You're listening to the 40 Fit Radio Podcast, dedicated to the 40-plus community. Join us as we discuss the truth about fitness and health using science, reason, and the experiences of our host and content experts. Welcome to the 40 Fit Nation. Hey, welcome back to 40 Fit Radio and welcome back to the 40 Fit Nation in 2020. I've got Coach Trent here. Yo. And Coach D, as usual. You know what I'm doing right now? What? Flexing. He's flexing his guns. Flexing. He's been in this hypertrophy program thing and he think getting all jacked up on me. My shirt's getting so, tight. So, yeah. That you, might that, have been the apple pie. Yeah, maybe that. We're not talking about your abdominal region where it's getting tight around your abdominal region. Oh. We're talking about your chest and arm. That's right? not hypertrophy? No. Dang. Well, that's an abdominal hypertrophy. <laughs> I mean, what if we had a... Pro- <laughs> We got this program. We got this awesome program now. It's abdominal hypertrophy. You know, it's I called mean, stopping strength. Yeah, I was fifty. I was over fifty, and I wanted to hypertrophy my abdominal wall, and this is how I did it. And so we could have our own DVD. I used one of those vibrating belts yeah. on my or abs. Be like that guy on YouTube that that um, I I don't know. I saw it about a year ago, and he has abdominal muscles tattooed on his stomach. Some <laughs> Indian guy. <laughs> So funny, and then he, he, but he was like fat. Yeah, but he looked yeah. like he had fat abdominals. It's it's awkward. I don't want. I, mean, I can't even talk about it anymore. So today's episode is an episode that you know. Recently, we asked for a call to action. Uh, we had a bunch of people who gave us comments. Which thank you to the listeners of Forty Fit Radio for your comments and for information and just giving us more topics uh, to talk about. And hopefully, they're things that you want to hear about because you asked for it. So one of the real common threads or most common comments, I guess you would say, was what do I do when I miss reps in a workout? What do I do in, I'm in the middle of a workout and let's say I don't have a barbell coach or, or a trainer who's right there with me. Maybe I'm doing um, an online program or I'm doing my own program. I, you know, I'm, I'm training in my garage by myself and I don't have a coach. Or I'm doing some type of remote product where I get check-ins and video review, or I'm or I'm actually in the gym with my coach. That that's the easiest one to answer. When you're in the gym with your coach, they should know what to do with you. But let's say they don't, which might be likely if they're not from inside our community, maybe. I don't know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of guys and ladies that don't know how to coach this stuff. So sure. So what do I do when I miss reps? during a rep and set scheme of a workout. So let's just take the squat as an example, okay? We're going to use the squat as an example, and then we'll take an upper body lift too. But first of all, I think Trent and I's answer is the same. And that answer is, it matters. It does, yeah. It matters. Or it it depends. Yeah, it it depends. depends. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about why it depends and why it matters what's going on in your training. So we're going to first talk about the most common trainee that we got this question from based on the style, the question, the people we spoke with. And that was generally the novice Mm -hmm. or maybe at the end of the novice progression into a little bit of intermediate. Right. We had several questions by individuals asking, Hey, you know, I'm doing three sets of five on the squat and I get to set three and I miss the last rep of set three. What do I do in set four? Right. So or do, do they, I do a set four? Yeah, yeah or, absolutely. And, and how do I do it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, definitely. Yeah. So I think um, this is probably a person who's a few months into the program it maybe even eight weeks into the program kind of depends on how fast you're moving through this. You know, younger, stronger, you know, maybe former athletes um, might hit this wall at week eight or nine if the weight's heavy enough. But bottom line is the weight has got the weight has gotten really heavy and perceptively heavy. Perceptively, yeah, right, that's right. true. It, it's not actually that heavy, right? Right. Unfortunately, but, but it's perceived to be heavy. But and that's feels, all that matters. It yeah. feels dang it feels heavy. heavy. Yeah. Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. And so, you know, I think the squat is one of the scarier lifts at first to to miss, you know, yeah. because you don't really know if you're going to get a squat 
until you're at the bottom. Yeah. And that's kind of the worst place to find out <laughs> whether yeah, you you're going to get have, it or not. <laughs> you may have a premonition on the way down. Right. That, that this is not going to go good. Right. You right. can just kind of feel it. And I tell you what, also, if you have that feeling on the way down, you're done. That's right. Set yeah. on the safeties. Yeah. Because you mentally have missed the lift. Yes. You know? and, and that's certainly a part of that. And I think we should come back to that point yeah. is that, yeah. you know, it, it, mentally Agreed. staying in the lift is definitely a part of this. But, yeah. you know, that, hey, it's a skill just right. as much as it is uh, a strength Right. event. Right. So, yeah. And so I think this person, it, it absolutely matters um, what the context is. So it, for this person, let's think about it a little bit. They're, they haven't been training that long. It's just been eight weeks, 12 weeks, you know, even, you know, four months, five yeah. months, whatever. And they haven't had that much training. Right. And so a couple of things could be going on there if they miss a rep. Probably the most likely thing is the thing that I see most often, they just misgrooved it. Right. Yeah. It's the third Technique set. Issue. They're tired mentally. They might be checked out. Sure. They're just, they want to be done. And so something happens, their technique breaks down and they miss the lift. Well, that's an easy one. I think if, if I'm coaching the person and I see the rep, I can get a sense of based on how their bar speed is moving, whether or not they would have gotten it had they grouped Absolutely. it correctly. Absolutely. Me too. And Me too. Yeah. if that's the case and I'm like, Hey, no worries. It's fine. Let's do it. I'll help them rack it up. Yep. Let's wait a couple minutes and just knock it out. Yeah. Right. Give me the full 15 work reps. Start fresh mentally. Start fresh mentally on the next rep set. Act like you haven't done anything yet and you're just hitting your first set. And let's stay in the groove, especially if you as a coach have seen the mechanics and the bar speed. But let's say we haven't seen the mechanics or yeah, bar speed. Right. Um, so I do the exact same thing that, that you're saying. Um, my first, the, like we talked about, it just depends. First of all, I want to know where are they at in the process? Where are they at as a trainee? So you and I are taking this frame of reference as if they're at the top of their NLP, their novice linear progression. And they have, this is the first time they have experienced heavy. And it's the first time they have quote unquote, missed some reps or missed a rep. Okay. Okay. So we haven't deloaded yet. We haven't, we haven't changed anything. And let's say this person is getting once a week coaching through some type of remote product video review or maybe a one-on-one -on -one session in the gym, okay? So for the majority of the time, for two other lifts or two other days, training days, they're on their own. And this is on, an, on, on their own day, okay? Right, right. That's, that's when this has occurred. So... The first thing I would do is say to them, first of all, are you doing the program? And you and I talked about that earlier. Right. Are you doing the program? And so what do we mean by doing the program, Trent? Gosh, well, several things. Um, the first thing we can point to is the what Rip has dubbed the three questions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And these are three easy questions you can ask yourself whenever you run into a wall. Number one is, are you taking enough rest time between sets? If it's been two minutes between, you're taking two minutes of rest between your work sets, that's not enough. You're going right. to need more than that. Right. Number two is, are you making the appropriate jumps in weight? We've talked about before, when you just start out, day one on the novice linear progression, well, for the next week or two, you can possibly make 10, maybe even 15 pound jumps, depending on where you're starting from. But that can't last forever. Right. If you're still trying to do that and it's week four or five and you're missing, no good. Yeah, you got to go from 10 to five pound jumps, to two and a half pound jumps, to eventually possibly one pound jumps on the That's upper right. body, upper yep. body lifts. That's right. So yeah. 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 And so if you're looking at this is an upper body issue you're running into, then I might be looking at, are you micro loading? Right. right. Are you right. doing those sure. two and a half, one sure. pound jumps? And number three is, are you eating enough? Right. Right. Exactly. So, so basically there's three criteria. Number one, you know, I always say it this way. Did you start the program? Uh, three questions. Did you start the program at the right load and weight? Did you start too high? And are you loading correctly from uh, session to session, from bout to bout? Number two, um, are you taking enough rest in between sets? And then number three, are you fueling? Are you eating enough calories um, and getting enough protein so that your body can adapt? Those three things. Now, I will add to those three questions. The other thing would be, what's going on with the stress in your life? Have you had this crazy project at work and maybe you're getting plenty of sleep, but the number one thing on your mind is the stress related to that project or school, or maybe it's a relationship issue, or maybe it's, you know, a fight with your spouse or, or a family issue or something else. What else is going on in your life 
that could be diverting your focus away from your training. And so those are all good things to look at um, and, and to assess those things first. And, and plain and simple, the, another one would be, are you getting your workouts in? Have you been consistent? You know, that kind of goes along with getting, getting you know, session to session training. Are you missing workouts? And all that relates to YNDTP, which is Mark Ripito's famous statement, are you doing, you know, you know, you're not doing the program. That's right. Yeah. You're not yeah. doing the program. So I first want to establish with my trainee, with my client, are you doing the program? I don't want you to hit a wall and it's really a fake wall. It's a false wall. Right. That wall would not exist if we were doing the program. It's going to eventually exist, but we have artificially induced that wall into the training because we're not allowing our body to adapt through the stress recovery adaptation cycle. That's right. That's right. So that's, that's what I want to do with them. That's my question to them first, Mm -hmm. but let's say all those things are spot on and they miss in set three, they miss um, rep number five or maybe four and five of the squat. Sure. Sure. So I do exactly what you just said first as a lifter. If I'm by myself in the gym, the first thing I would need to do is I need to clear my mind mentally and just clean the slate. The second thing I need to do is if I did video of the prior set, look at it, evaluate the bar speed. I don't care about RPE. I really want to know how fast is that bar moving? If the bar was moving yeah. relatively quick, then you may have just misgrooved the rep and look for form issues. Look for the bar going in front of the foot, the bar going behind the foot, lifting the chest too early, not getting hip drive, whatever the form is for that particular lift, put that to the model and then assess, okay, and tweak and make slight changes but let's go ahead and do the next set. That's right. Yeah. Go, let's ahead, go ahead and do the next set. Finish, finish all your reps. And yes. that's, and that's important. Whatever reps are available to you. That's right. Yeah. So if it's, if you missed one or two reps, go and finish those one or two reps and you're in a fourth final set. And the reason why it's important to do this is in the stress recovery adaptation model that we use to, to program and to make progress and evaluate our progress, stress is part of the equation. And if you only do 13 reps instead of the full 15 reps because you missed the last two, then that's not quite enough stress, right? Yeah. It's very important that we get enough stress in our workout. So we want to we want to try to finish these. Um, I will say this: I think in terms of mental approach, when you miss that last couple of reps on the third set, I see most of the time if you're missing it at that point then it's probably just fatigue related and you probably just got loose. Like mentally you, you want You were thinking about racking the bar before you actually finished the last couple of reps. And so I find it's really an easy thing to, to evaluate is say, okay, like you said, wipe the slate clean mentally, right? And just tell yourself, I'm going to attack that bar. I'm going to get tight, super tight, especially in the squat. And I'm going to stay tight and I'm going to yeah. stay with this lift until I yeah, am improve done. focus. That's yeah. right. And I think, you know, the, the, the other thing to understand guys, and we're going to talk about this in another podcast coming up because it was another great question. You know, um, it's meant to be heavy kind of situation. This is, this is that time where you have to mentally focus and realize that, that the, the goal, the end product of this type of training for any trainee is that you get stronger. Um, but to get stronger, it has to end up being heavier That's and right. it's heavier every single workout. And so you've been building up to this and let's say it's your first time to hit a wall in your novice progression, your NLP, and you hit that wall in the squat that day. Then the way I, I approach it with my clients is basically, I would say, okay, you miss rep. Let's say you miss rep five on set number three, set number four. I want you to get as many reps as you can. Mm-hmm. And the goal is to go back and get five. I'm not going to make you get six, but I want you to get five and set five. I want you to get five. Okay. But, and then I want you to record that and I want to know what it is, but let's say you went to set, set, um, four and you got, you got four again and you went to set five and you only got three. So just a post recording process note here. We realized after we recorded this that what Darren meant to say was sets two and three and reps four and five. And he was kind of using sets and reps interchangeably there. So what we're talking about is three sets of five. We're assuming you're a novice and you're doing three sets of five here. And what what do you do if you miss rep four or five of set two, rep four or five of set three? 
the answer is still the same. You're going to rack the bar, you're going to go back for another set, and make up the reps that you missed. Okay, let's go back to Darren. Then what you have to do as a lifter is if you don't have coaching at that time, if you're coaching yourself, you have to ask yourself all those questions we just talked about. Number one, why in DTP? Am I doing the program Right. first? Am I eating enough calories? And my recommendation would be eat more. That's right. Because that, this may, is that so may help. Common. That may help That's significantly. Right. It is so common. Eat more protein, common. eat more carbs. <laughs> you, you, you know, a, a big portion of the population that we deal with are underweight. I'm going to call them underweight. They, they don't think they're underweight. They think they're overweight, right? But they're skinny, fat men and women that walk yeah. in, right? Yeah. Now, we do have... The other type of client, which right. is which is a clearly overweight, over fat client too, and that's, overly nourished. Right. I like to call it overly, overly nourished, nourished. Right? Yeah, I don't say that pejoratively. Yeah. It just yeah. is what it is, right? But we do see a lot of people who are underweight and they're then they're over fat, right? right. They're skinny fat. Right. Their and body composition shifted. That's right. They, they have they, their their weight is 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 not necessarily they're not necessarily obese. They're just they just don't have a lot of muscle mass. That's right. And it's so common. That what happens is. They start doing the program. They're doing great in the first four to six weeks. And then they start getting a little bit squirrely, especially the guys start yeah. getting a little bit squirrely about the fact that now they're building some abs and some spinal rectors and their, their waist is starting to, um, you know, kind of bulge out just a little bit more. They haven't really gotten any fatter. They just right, started right. to put on some muscle mass. Right. And then they start going to trying to do a cut. Right. Yeah. And, and we don't restri- want that right that's now. Right. We're, we're not, we're not there. That's they, premature. That's right. They started restricting premature calories. Premature cutation. Yeah, that's right. And and they're not even close to finishing out their LP. And that's the thing. It's if, if you're doing that, that's a surefire way to, to stall out right. too soon. Yeah. And so when that, so when that lifter hits that squat and they can't get their reps, then if they, if we've never modified programming and we've never hit a plateau yet in the, in the NLP, um, then we would, I would program it this way. I would do a slight deload or a reset of the weight. And sometimes, and I, I, it matters how tough they are mentally. Right. If you're tough enough mentally, I might have you attack that squat load again. That's right. Yep. If you're tough enough mentally, I might Next have workout. you do it again. Next workout, try to get three sets of five with it. Right. And see if you get it. Um, I think, you know, I have found uh, a bunch of lifters who over the years that if if I'll just let them hit that workout one more time, they'll grow enough between the last workout and the next workout to adapt and hit it. And it is a mental uh, barrier that they break through because now they convince themselves that I can do something I didn't used to be able to do when I when I failed at it. And that, that success is very important. But, the, but if they hit a wall again in the second workout and we have never deloaded before, the first thing I'm going to do with them is deload them. And I'll probably deload them 10%. Yep, that's a great um, rule of thumb. I'll just yep. deload them off the top 10%. If they're squatting 200, I'll take 20 pounds off. I'll go to 180 and then we'll climb back up again. And let's say we climb back up and again, we hit a wall again, but let's say, and the goal would be that now we hit the wall at 210. Sure. Okay. Yep. And that's, that's nine times out of 10. What's going to happen. Mm-hmm. We're going to hit the wall higher than we hit it before. That's the goal. Um, when we hit the wall again, then I have a choice as a coach. If they're mentally crazy strong, I might deload them again. Sure. And I might do something like a 5% deload and just try to eke out a little bit more strength with that, and I will have to admit, Trent will tell you this because he was a trainee of mine. I am notoriously guilty of milking every single pound I can out of the NLP. I think I had you on an NLP, some form of one for a year. Almost, yeah, nearly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, almost a year. Yeah, because I came to I you. I just keep, kept tweaking things within that. You did, yeah. I think I'd come to you and I'd been training for three, four months. My squat was somewhere around 300. For three sets of five, yeah. and I, I, you know, I, I was hitting a wall, and so you—that's what you did. You deloaded me, and you yeah. kept me on what we call sometimes the advanced novice kind right, of phase, right. just doing little tweaks here and there. You just kept right. pushing my weights yeah. up and up and up for another eight yeah. months almost. Yeah, yeah. and it, and it worked. I it mean, worked. You, cra- you went to nationals, yeah. and so get crazy strong. But so then I might take that individual back up after that little five percent deload. Now, if they're not mentally strong enough, I may go ahead, and if it's if it's with a female, we we will we would have already been doing five sets of three. We would have already flipped the yeah. the, the reps. So let's flesh that out a little bit. Yeah. So with a female early on in training, usually about two weeks in, maybe 
if they're fair, rel- relatively stronger and they have more muscle mass and they're athletic, I might wait till three, four weeks in. But but normally around two to three weeks in, that's a good average. We're going to go from three sets of five on lifts to five sets of three. And on the deadlift, instead of doing one set of five, I'll probably go to two sets of three. Right. Um, it just – women – don't have the same recruitment level that men do at higher loads, motor recruitment level. And they do very well with um, being able to hang in there with good stamina and good endurance and training. And they can get all the reps, but you have to go to shorter rep sets so that they can continue. And you'll get them crazy strong doing that. That's but right. Yeah. They just can't hold a significant portion of their maximum force production for as many reps as males can. They just right. don't recruit. Uh, motor units as well over over bouts over a longer bout of reps right, right. so so, th- so that's a that's a change you're going to make um before they hit this wall oh yeah right? yeah that's not that's not a wall change so it's just i want to talk about deloads pretty. for um for women um so w- they're already doing five sets of three for the squat i totally agree with you um i do one two deloads if if they yeah if they, you know have yeah. the the mental capacity to do it um i find with the upper body movements after one deload, that's all I'm going to do. Once they hit a wall after the first deload and they've built back up and hopefully broken past that plateau, they hit the first time, I'm going to start changing programming to keep the press moving yeah. because yeah. I find that most often, especially for females, that it's just that they need more stress to c- continue driving those upper body lifts. And they don't really respond too much to continual uh, deloading. Right, but the right. squat and the deadlift, those tend to be a little bit yeah. more robust. And I think one of the things to point out here about the deload that fits in with the are you doing the program thing is that the deload is a great thing when you're a novice because it allows you to sort of catch up in the areas where you might be right. lagging. Let's say that, you know, you do you take a hard look in the mirror and you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm not eating like I should be. Right. I'm, I'm going to fix that. Right. Well, you might be at a plateau right now. The deload gives you a chance to hammer those calories, put on a little right bit of body it. weight, yep. eat through the sticking point. Right. Yep. Um, Sometimes our lifts move, they don't all move up um, the same way. Well, they right? never move up proportionally. Almost never, right? Yeah. Sometimes you might have a guy who's a really good squatter, struggles with the deadlift right. or the other way around, right? Yeah. And we know that those two lifts tend to drive each other up, especially right. as a novice. So if you take a deload on a squat, say you're struggling on the squat, but you're doing great in the deadlift, by the time you get back to that plateau you were at on the squat after the deload, well, your deadlift's now 20, 30 right. pounds heavier. And that might be enough to, you know, help you get through whatever that sticking point right. you hit the first sure. time is. Sure. So it gives you a chance to sort of catch up in whatever area you're lagging in, um, and that's a really great thing early on in that novice yeah. process. No, I, I agree with that. I think that that um, I found that women can really grind through um, plateaus really well, and 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 especially um, our population, kind of that 40 plus population, once they develop some confidence in themselves that they can handle a bar, they've got good form. Um, they understand the rationale, they see changes in their body and they also kind of get the perceptual feel of heavy for the first time. Yeah. Um, they do really well with deloading and resetting and, and, uh, I'm probably a little bit more conservative there. I mean, I mean a little bit more, I guess you would say aggressive there. I'll go ahead and deload them a couple times. But then on the upper body lifts. Right. But then fairly quickly thereafter, I will usually go to a modified, I guess you would call intermediate programming model where I'm going to do like an intensity day and a volume day in the upper body lifts, intensity, volume. Um, and then we'll, we'll track along with that. And, and then eventually you have to change that too. But this is not necessarily a, a programming episode right. as much as it is um, for that novice that hits that wall in their workout. You know, I've had several lifters that go ahead and do finish the reps in their set and they just deload to a lower weight to get all their volume in. And I don't necessarily like that. Mm -hmm. I I prefer that they stay with the load that they're at and they try to get as many reps as they can. And what I might do is what you said earlier, too. If it's if it's three sets of five and they hit a wall in set in, let's say, set two, um, uh, yeah. In set two, they hit a. Oh, earlier we were, I think I said set four, there is no set four in three sets of five. Um, so, you know, let's say they hit a wall in set two right? and they, they go, they go three, they go one set is one set of five. The second set is one set of four. And the third set is one set of three. 
What I may have them do on the tail end is add a couple doubles or add a double and a single just to get that volume in. But but other than that, we're going to try to hit that same load again if all those things are are correct that we talked about earlier. That's right. And so, yeah. um, you know, and then we do this deload cycle. We might do that a couple of times. And then at some point, we're going to have to go to a completely, you know, we're going to have to modify the programming model. That's right. We're going to yeah. have to start doing something like heavy, light, heavy. And then we might go to heavy, light, medium. And then we got might go to what we talked about, an intensity um, volume day. And we just keep transitioning. But the goal here is, is that we're using the correct dosage for the the adaptation that we want. We don't want to overdose folks. I mean, um, you know, in the industry right now, in the barbell industry, which it's been around for a long time, actually, it was, I hate to say it, but, you know, there were several CrossFit trainers and athletes, uh, let's say 10 years ago, that were talking about minimum effect, minimum effective dosage, MED. Mm. And so um, that that applies to any training model that that we only want enough dosage to be effective. Because if we over overdose people, then it just crashes people. And we're also using up of the some, some of the potential that we could use in the future. If we underdose them, then they don't adapt. So it is a it is a ballet of such. It That's is right. a dance yeah. of such of trying to get that individual to continue to adapt over time with different programming tweaks and remodeling and changing things up. And then the programming has to become more complicated. Right. Um, I, I'm not one, uh, I, you know, you, you know how I am. Uh, I give you very, when Trent and I are talking about stuff and he says, you know, what do you think I should do this and do that? I usually kind of go with the more simplistic approach. Right. And that's just because why get complex and sexy when you don't need to be? That's right. Yeah. Um, gets- I see a lot of lifters on Instagram and on Facebook that I know are way below where they could be strength wise, and they're doing some crazy complicated programming. Right, right. I, I don't get that. That doesn't make sense to me. It gets easy. Yeah, you see this a lot with intermediate lifters who get through maybe that early intermediate phase where there's some well known models that are out there, like Texas Method or Heavy Light Medium. They get past that, and then they kind of enter this this amorphous, nebulous world yeah. of intermediate programming, and they end up picking up one of these frankly, fairly advanced templates right, and just right. like, oh, hey, right. I'll do this. And yeah. they just, you know, for the next year or two, they just kind of spin their wheels, you right. know, they don't really yeah. go anywhere. Yeah. And I, I think, so let's, let's boil this back down to the novice because, yeah. you know, that's yeah, another that's discussion. Yeah. That's another discussion we can have later. Um, one way I like to look at it is when you're novice, by definition, you're not strong enough yet to give yourself so much stress in a workout that you're going to be wrecked, right? Now, it might feel that way. Right, Subjectively, right. it feels crazy heavy in the first time you do this. I remember what it felt like um, going through the novice progression, but it's important to get all those reps yeah. that you're prescribed because that's what you need to get stronger right. to the next step. And I think there's another piece of this, and we've kind of talked about it a little bit. There's a mental fortitude that's, a, a, frankly, I think it's a skill in lifting. There's the skill of lifting which is controlling your body and controlling your emotions under a heavy barbell. And that's something you can only do by lifting heavy. Right? Yeah. You know, if your form, that's why, you know, so a lot of people will, will ask about, well, you know, my form breaks down at, at 200 and, and I think I need to go down to 135 and really just hammer my form. It's like, no. Yeah, exactly. No. You're only going to learn how to lift 205 correctly right. by lifting 205. Right. You know? Right. And so um, I think that's that, that mental skill you can't overlook. You've got to build that. And it's, it's something just like strength. You have to be consistent. You have to hit your workouts. It has to be cr- progressively harder. The mental skill of lifting is the same way. Yeah, you get, you, get, you get physically strong. You get psychologically strong. And let's just say you get skill strong. You get improved skill. Uh, you get a, 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 an immensely higher skill level over the repetitions and over grinding out reps that are really, really tough. Right. And I would say that, that the key there is is that you know, when you're in your workout, you know, we're talking about the novice here. When you're in your workout and you miss a rep, do not let it cave you mentally. You have not failed. That's right. Yeah. You have not failed. The fact that you are at the top of your NLP in and of itself is a byproduct of a bunch of success. Right. It is a byproduct of the fact that you have stuck with your program. If we establish that you're doing the program, and we know that you're doing everything that you can in your past and in the present to be where you are. And we, we didn't miss anything along the way. 
then you are you are reaping the harvest of a lot of good hard work and diligence. And this is exactly where I want you as a That's coach. Right. I want it to be heavy. I want it to be grinding. I'll give you a great example. My oldest daughter's fiance is at the very top of the NLP, and she is too, really. And we've done some things to adapt them. And and I, recently I went to kind of a a um, heavy, uh, kind of a heavy light medium uh, intermediate programming for them and still using, you know, um, a one weekly increase in load on the heavy day. And on the light day, they do 80%. On the medium day, they do 90%, basically. Mm-hmm. But it, it, he was like, oh, thank you. He was like, oh, thanks. You know, he, you know, he calls me Mr. Deaton, but you know, that's fine too. But he was like, Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, and it, I think it just kind of gave him a mental rest, which he needed because every single workout was hard. Right. That's the other thing I think that you need to get to though. You need to pay your dues That's right. on the front end and you need to go through it at least two times of hitting the wall and resetting, deloading, hitting the wall and resetting and then at that point, we can begin to modify programming, but you do everything in your power to get those reps. And when you miss a rep, do not let um, the thought that that is a failed rep come into your mind. It is not a failed rep. Yes, you missed the rep, but that is not a sign of failure. That is a sign that we have taken you to a point, if everything else has been done that needs to be done, that we have taken you to a point where we have allowed you to adapt close to your maximum genetic potential. We're up there at the top now. Maybe we're not, you know, that close to your MGP, but, but we're getting up there and now we've got to become a little bit more sexy and you're going to have to put a little bit more diligence in and all the easy stuff is gone. That's right. That's the hardest part about this is that it doesn't, you know, people walk in the gym and look at lifters like you and me or other guys that we know that have been lifting for several years, you know, um, you know, I mean, talk to rip. I mean, or some of these guys that have been lifting for decades, it's hard, man. You go in and and there's not a whole lot of gains going on. No, (laughs) It's hard. And if you get your deadlift up by five pounds that year, 10 pounds, it's like, boom, you know, right. Well, to a novice, that's nothing. Yeah. You know, that's nothing. That's right. So you should take advantage of the fact that you've really worked hard to get to where you are. And it's, you know, I think it it should be a source of pride. You know, it should be a source of pride. If you if you legit do this, if you legit go through your novice progression and you do all these things we're talking about, you follow the program, you mentally work through these obstacles because you're going to hit a wall. Dial in your form. And you dial all those things in. Man, you earned it at that yeah, point. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And that's, you should yeah. wear that as a badge of pride because, the, frankly, that's, I've, I've heard someone else say this. Um, I can't remember who it is. But um, they're like, barbell training is for everyone, but it's kind of not for everyone right, at the same right. time. Mentally, Anyone can do it, yeah. Anyone can do it, but mentally, most people are going to check out way before right. now. So if you've made it through to this other side, congratulations. Right. You know, you're yeah. you're in a... a, a small set of people that have done this. Yeah. So, so let's, let's just kind of get the, in closing, let's just kind of go over this real quick. Number one, uh, you miss a rep in a workout. You're in set two of a three, uh, three set cycle of reps, three sets of five, let's say on the squat. Number one, are you doing the program? Go back through and make a mental inventory of, are you doing the things that you need to do to be successful in training? Did you start too high in your loads? Are you taking appropriate jumps from bout to bout? Are you getting enough rest in between cycles? Are you eating enough to fuel your body to adapt to training? Are you controlling stress? Is there a big stressor in your life? Um, are you staying mentally focused during, during your lifts? Ask yourself those questions and make mental notes and maybe written notes in your log so that you know the things you need to dial in. Now, for the next set that you're about to hit, Clear your mind of your previous misrep. Clear your mind. Um, if you were able to video the prior set and you saw some of your video and the bar path speed and you saw maybe a little form tweak here or there, dial that in. Get your mind together. Dial that in. Stay focused and hit your next set. If for whatever reason you can't hit the reps in that set, then you can tack a couple doubles or singles on at the end to try to get, if it's three sets of five, all 15 reps. But the number one thing is we want you to try to get most of your volume, but it's not a deal breaker for me as a coach if you get one set of five, one set of four, one set of four. 
Okay. I'm not, it's not going to crush your training, but I may have you do that weight again next workout. Do not take that as a negative. It is a positive. We're trying to see, can you adapt? Mm -hmm. Can you get stronger? Did we miss the boat on one of those questions? And so we might take you into it again. At that point, if you hit a wall again, we're probably going to deload you. We're going to go through two to three iterations of that, potentially, if you're a novice. And then at that point, we might start uh, playing with some rep schemes. On females, we've already talked about it. Early on in the training, within two to three weeks, we invert five sets of three on almost everything and two sets of three on the deadlift. Right. But males, sometimes we'll invert five sets of three. That doesn't work very long for males, especially in in upper body lifts. Right, Um, right. And so then from there, we've got to get, re- you know, more creative with programming. And then that's, a, that's another uh, discussion for programming podcast. That's right. So, yeah. We'll hit that one. Yeah. We'll hit that one soon. I think, the, I think you covered it, man. Yeah. Get your I think reps we did done, it. Yeah. guys. Go get it done. Remember, it's supposed to be heavy. It's supposed to be hard. That's part of the game. Yeah. Uh, what does Henry Rollins always say? The iron kicks you the real deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I saw, I saw Sully uh, on, um, that's uh, for you guys. That's Dr. Sullivan. John Sullivan, who wrote Barbell Prescription. I saw him post on Instagram today. I think it was on Facebook, too. But I don't know what he had on the bar, but it was 200 plus. Yeah. I mean, it was it was two wheels and some change. And he he did a single with it and yelled, you know, screamed out. It was an awesome lift, guys. Great layback. Really well controlled, though. Not too far back. And and great lockout at the top. And how old is Sully? Is he approaching six? Is he right at sixty? He's in his fifties. I think for sure. I think he's late fifties. Yeah. Late fifties sounds about right. But um, he owns Gray Steel. Uh, great guy. Check him out, man. Barbell Prescription, great book. But um, then right after the lift, he posted um, Henry Rollins's yeah, uh, right. yeah. Uh, quote, "Iron it, in the soul" or whatever. Yeah, it, it, is. Was, yeah, it yeah. was awesome, That's man. Great. And That's it great. does kick you the real deal. There's no. There's no posing in barbell training. That's right. Yeah. It's, you know, I, one of the things I love about barbell training and strength is it, it's as close as we're ever going to get to a meritocracy. I think, you know, it, yeah. you, you can't, you can't, it's authentic, man. can't buy your way to strength. You can't read nope. your way to strength. Yeah. Some, some people get a genet win the genetic lottery, but, um, but you know, everyone that, that is strong has worked for it Yep, you to, earn it. to a, a large degree. So, all right, guys, well, go get it, go get your training in the meantime, Send us your questions. Keep those coming. We got some great comments on Facebook and Instagram when we put out our call to action to let us know what you want to hear on this podcast. Keep those questions coming. We want to hear more. You can do that at info at 40fit.com. Send us an email there. Go to Instagram, leave comments on our podcast post, and you can go to Facebook, 40 Fit Nation. We got lots of discussions there about training and programming and anything. So ask your questions there, give us some feedback, and then, um, Until then, we'll see you next time. See you next time.